Through no fault of their own, the retirement security of Texas public employees is under assault by prominent billionaires who worry that business taxes are too high. The billionaires foot the bill for research groups which select bits and pieces of information to forecast the inevitable doom of public pension plans. In fact, most Texas pensions are performing well. For example, take Enron trader John Arnold. He retired at 39 with billions in the bank. He and his wife Laura have pledged hundreds of millions of dollars to eliminate defined benefit plans through their Laura and John Arnold Foundation and the highly secretive Action Now initiative. Or consider San Antonio billionaire James Leininger. He has given more than $10 million to Texas political candidates who are in position to change the retirement benefits that police, firefighters, and municipal employees earn. Leininger's also given millions and millions to the Texas Public Policy Foundation. This Austin-based organization works to influence state legislatures to take action against traditional pension plans. And there's Tim Dunn, a West Texas oil man. He's financed two groups that cherry-pick legislators' votes in skewed indexes to rile up voters in their home districts against pro-pension incumbents. But the biggest threat to all public employees in Texas and around the United States comes from industrialist brothers Charles and David Pope. With personal wealth approaching $40 billion each, they fund organizations rewriting the long, successful history of pension plans for our city's employees. The Koch brothers aren't like the working men and women of our cities. According to the Robert Greenwald documentary, The Koch Brothers Exposed, they inherited their startup capital from their family's wealth. Then they began their assault on workers' retirement security. They inherited their wealth and their penchant for secrecy from their father, Fred, who made his fortune in the oil business in the Soviet Union of the 1930s. Fred Koch came back to the United States uh, after taking money from the Soviet Union and used that money to start his own oil empire here, amassing some $200 million. With his wealth and power, he began to wage a systematic attack on American values, including funding the John Birch Society. It's a far-right, racist organization that saw communist conspiracies everywhere. They even accused then-President Dwight Eisenhower of being a Soviet spy. This is the climate that the two brothers, Charles and David, grew up in at home. And then they inherited a big pile of money uh, from Daddy Fred. But the important thing is not that they have the wealth, but they think they're the top dogs and we're just a bunch of fire hikers out here in the countryside. That's their attitude. The Koch brothers helped fund the American Legislative Exchange Council, or ALEC. ALEC, of course, is the American Legislative Exchange Council, a conservative pro-business organization that brings together mostly Republican state lawmakers from around the country and teams them up with representatives from corporations like ExxonMobil, AT&T, and Pfizer. You can actually tell who's who around here with lawmakers wearing red badges that say legislative member and corporate representatives wearing blue badges that say private sector member. And it's this activity that threatens progressives who argue that this organization acts as a shadow government, churning out corporatist legislation and forcing elected lawmakers to pledge allegiance to corporate interests rather than their own voters back home. Emboldened by the dysfunction down the street in Congress, Alec is taking the responsibility of governing into their own hands. And that is exactly how corporate America wants it. Alec already has developed a policy guide for dismantling public employees' pensions and negatively affecting their retirement. It's making waves in Texas. Two of three Texas groups base their pension-destroying policies on Alec's booklet. Empowered Texans are picking off pension-friendly legislators and replacing them with more radical enemies of public sector employees. In Austin, the influential Texas Public Policy Foundation has wholeheartedly adopted Alex's campaign against defined benefit plans. Its executive director, Talmadge Heflin, speaks regularly to state legislators about a non-existent pension crisis in Texas, one which only he seems to see. To him, the only solution seems to be dismantling defined benefit plans. The Laura and John Arnold Foundation has its own similar policy paper. It calls for new types of pension financing schemes that remove control of employees' pensions from the hands of investment experts. 
The worst thing about these assaults on retirement security is that they don't stop with public sector employees. Despite their success, very few defined benefit plans still exist for private sector employees. And if these workers don't manage investments in their 401ks just right, our entire country will foot the bill for millions of people who don't have enough money to retire securely. The Texas Association of Public Employer Retirement Systems stands against these efforts to dismantle traditional plans for police, firefighters, and municipal employees. Going into the 2015 legislative session, we will be watchful for these and other threats against our members' plans. Stay tuned to our website, textpers.org, and our Facebook page for announcements and alerts as we learn more about these threats to your retirement security.